Hello everybody, it's Priscilla Batsell in Spring Hill at Expressionist Art Studio. It's kind of late in the day. I discovered my tripod was actually broken and I had to replace it. I would like to get that camera angle just right for you, but I'm not sure it's going to happen today. Um, I just want to paint and uh, we'll take a chance on that. I said it was Expressionist Art Studio Gallery in the backyard late in the day, so I've been doing a series of things with some semi-geometric shapes in it and I'm kind of liking that series. And these are my potential tools, my little scoops and things. And basically where I'm going to start, even though I wish I had a tray half this size that would hold the same amount, I'm going to just make up a, a pan of colors and try and throw my caps in another container. It seems like whatever I put on the outside edge gets lost. There's little tabs in here. That's just the, le the lead the lead? The lid to a lettuce container. I think it was early girl or similar. So I'm going to keep throwing my, throwing my caps in my little tub and try and make some pretty colors. And if I'm willful enough, maybe I'll get away with some really nice brights. That's sort of my plan is, uh, Every time before I start painting, I think I should just go neon this time all the way, and then I just don't do it. <laughs> so, oh well, never mind. Ah, I found what I was looking for. There we go. All these paints were shaken up before I started. All these paints have 10 to 20 percent GAC 800 by Golden In, and uh, after I mix 80 or 90 percent color, then I mix the rest flow troll, and the rest can be anywhere from double to more than double. until I get the viscosity I like, which is about the thickness of uh, warm honey. I see that I am missing my favorite color, colors, including the Prussian blue, which makes a nice dark statement. I don't want to get too crazy because I'm not sure I have enough time to use up the rest of this paint and I'll have to pour it off into something else and then it becomes a lot more iffy as to whether I can use it again. Although I haven't really failed yet, there's my favorite neon color, which usually operates best when it's close to white. I have like a better than 70% chance of uh, keeping the neon neon if it's near white. Uh, what else have I got? I haven't put any gold in there. Most of what I see on the surface is what I go after that I'm using. Everything else is sort of in my imagination, and uh, sometimes it works. We got some nice purples in there. We got no black in there. I feel like I'm missing something, and I see it. Now, what's what's nice about the squeeze bottles is it's easy to apply. What's not nice about the squeeze bottles is you can't get a, a surface area coverage in any sort of particular mass. And I'm going to check out whatever I'm missing, which is some of that. And I didn't put any red in there. And my pink is now buried. So I am yet again creating too much color. I can see that. But I am planning on doing another painting. Whether you get to see it or not, we can cross our fingers for that. That is a similar color, but not the same. And that's a nice color. And I said I wanted red, and then I didn't get it, and I have some red-orange, which is popping. Yeah. That is probably more like a red from uh, Arteza. And this is more of a magenta red, which is not the same at all. Nope, not the same at all. I doubt whether that's easy for you to tell. So what I'm going to do, the last thing I'm going to do is throw some white pearl in there, because white is always a nice catalyst for something. And I can dump all of this at one time right out onto something else. It looks like, like my whole table has shifted down. And I'm not sure how that happened. I'm going to try and level that without having an... Let's just use a dustpan and turn it upside down. All right, that does not bode well. Also, I know I have glasses here, and I'm going to go get them right now. And I'm sorry about that, but I can't operate without them. I don't have a kerchief on my head, so let's pray that there's no hairs that want to go. Now I can see schmutz on my canvas. Anyway, so I have been doing 
like I said, geometric. So I'm sort of starting most of these right now, at least for the moment. I see you, whatever you are. Come out of there. Long stringy thing. Looks like the uh, inside track to a screw on cover from a squeeze bottle. Go figure. So I'm going to take my OXO omelet turning spatula that you can find if you're lucky on my Amazon link. And if I'm, if you're the one person who asked me about this and I lost the message while I was busy doing 16 things all at once, um, ask me again and I'll give you the link. No problem. Oh, there's reason to celebrate if you guys don't know. I have almost 300 videos. I had um, 297 the last time I looked, not including things that need to be uploaded. And there's a few, a few more of those. And uh, YouTube has put uh, the availability of sharing photographs, which is awesome. Which means I can show you anything you ever ask me about, if you ask me about it, in the comments section of what I'm assuming is my channel. <laughs> It's kind of a new feature, but um, between last night and this morning, I think I put up like six or seven. And I'm trying to include the links to the videos and a little promo here and there about, um, you know, there being so many videos. Because you guys need to know that if you're new to the channel, there's not just 10 or 20. There's 290 something going on 300. And um, it'd be really nice to have you guys go check them out. A lot of them are very cool. All right. So that's me using my finger over the edge on my omelet turning with my omelet turning spatula and I'm not going to worry about the rest of them. I say that all the time and then I do it anyway. Oh well. Where there's paint dripping down the side it just makes me want to cover it. I have a cotton rag always handy right here and it wipes off the OXO omelet turning spatula quite nicely and I think what I want to do today is something a little different than what I did before. I want to do something other than just black. And I've been having a pretty good time with this color lately. And I don't have a specific plan, but I do have, and I'll show you in a second what I do have. I guess I'm still a little bit in Halloween themed colors, whether this will come out then or not. Anyway, so that's a Princeton Catalyst art tool right there. And I like just wetting the canvas with the paint as opposed to having a big gloppy area because I don't always tip. And I love the patterns that the fluid art, fluid acrylics with the, um, with the Floetrol in make. I don't need silicone necessarily. I'm not going after like the most sell prize, but I am interested in utilizing everything that I've learned so far in the past 18 months or more to um, make my abstract expressionist art a possibility. So my plan here is to wipe that off again and find my black, although it could be blue and it could be some more white and that could be pearl. Yes, my mind is going a million miles an hour. I think I'm just going to line that with some white and the same here and the same here. And I'm just going to operate from a seat of my pants position, the one I'm usually <laughs> writing from, honestly. And I'm going to use my, my experience to try and tell me not to overdose the canvas areas with paint because I basically just want to use them as a wet background. I wish I wouldn't leave stuff in my way. Um, when I drop some of the pretty colors on top. I may or may not use a whole lot of those. I might wind up doing a whole other canvas just to uh, fully utilize that. I'm not really trying to get any white in there, but I suspect that that may be what's going to happen anyway. Now I can use my squeeze bottles as I go along to add lines of color wherever I want, and I really enjoyed doing that recently. Also, I'm using you know the spatula that you can see, and I have four or five others. There's at least one on my Amazon link right below the video on my page. If you find one, you may be able to locate the rest. I never had the rest on there, but somebody told me that they found them all. And that was like, woo, <laughs> cool. Can't beat that. So this is the one. Why don't I take my long skinny one and use that over there and then wipe it off. 
I don't have to throw things in the bucket until I can't use them anymore. As long as I can wipe them off with my cloth, they're still functional. I'm going to take some of that white off. Continue. Oh god, somebody told me they looked like piano keys the other day, and guess what I'm still channeling? Oh well. <laughs> it won't look like that when I'm done. I hope not anyway. Not that it's bad, it's just I don't want cliché. If I can help it. Okay, so now I think that I'm just going to continue on with my theme. It's not terribly hot now. You know, only 80 or 85 compared to what we get used to in Florida. That's nothing. And the fans are blowing. So um, hopefully the paint that I've got on here will stay nice and moist so we'll be able to manipulate some stuff. I like to use my spatula just to push my colors right up to the ones that are next to it. So if I have any gaps in my canvas, which I suspect I'll get rid of pretty shortly here, I'm not going to worry about it. All right, so I have one left, and I guess I'm going to cover it with the same thing again. Go figure. And that looks like a fairly decent quantity on there. Like in thickness, like in... I don't want masses. Because masses will just become a big, gloopy problem. And I do use Golden's product, GAC 800, which is meant to prevent cracking when the paint is thick and it works for me beautifully. I have heard of somebody who doesn't have that issue. We all want to know what her secret is. <laughs> but I don't have it, so when you find her, ask her. Maybe she's figured it out by now. She was like asking me what she thought I what I thought it what I thought her secret was and I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> but I'd like to know. Anyway, so you can see what I'm doing is I'm just playing a little bit. Here and there making lines. It's what I do when I'm in abstract expressionist mode is I just follow my instincts, which is not so very different than what happens when you're acrylic pouring, except for the majority of that is happen happening accidental. And I am at least comforting myself with the idea that I'm making marks. And the paint is wet enough to heal itself, so even if I see a little canvas for a moment, I'm not going to have too much of an issue. I'm going to move some of my paints back out of the way. Hopefully you can see everything. I've got black paint there. Ooh, and I don't want to waste it. So let's put it there and here. And then just keep doing what I was doing. We've got five minutes left. This is obviously going to be a part one and a part two, unless I get very busy very quickly. I want to put some stuff right up the middle. It's definitely Halloween colors. And you can see, well maybe you can't see, but I can see that there are some small cells forming just from mixing the black and the white and agitating the paint. It's a fairly simple concept and I could probably keep it pretty simple if I wanted to stay there. Let's see what happens. So, if you're looking for my wet and dry art books from YouTube, they're very incomplete at the moment because Facebook blocked me from uh, Expressionist Art Studio fans and uh, appreciate Expressionist Art Studio Gallery of fans and collectors. They uh, they won't let me add anything except for a comment to a piece of to to whatever's up there. And it's not a place for other people to post. It's just meant to share to people who are interested in purchasing or admiring my artwork from my studio. So there is a lot of artwork there. I mean, there's still a lot of artwork there, but there isn't as much as there will be. And I think when it comes down to it, I'm either going to start another page or I'm going to start other albums so you don't have to scroll through, you know, 500 posts to find what you're looking for. I'm really having a good time just talking to you and doing not much of anything. At the bottom of the link, excuse me, at the bottom of the description underneath the video are links to Pinterest and Instagram. And in the middle of the description is my pouring recipe, which I gave at the beginning of the video. And I'm really having a pretty good time with this. And I could add just a few colors. I don't know what you can see. Probably not enough from that vantage point. But I'm just liking the aspect of 
dragging the spatula through. And I know I could probably dip this in a little white paint. Let's just do that because I can. All right, and right over the edge. And I'm gonna do that again. If I can see it, I can steal it. And I'm just gonna use my spatula as a tool to pull the colors of paint out that I like and let them fall down, as opposed to the shovel or a scoop right now. And I could use and will use either chain or bamboo skewer at some point in time to manipulate this depending on how I'm feeling about it at the moment. I do sell my artwork. If anybody wants to help me out, um, <laughs> thank you very much. I am also very, very pleased to tell you that people have been contributing uh, the last couple of days and I'm up enough to be able to uh, buy another 20 pack of 16 by 20 canvases, yay, which I will do because I'm completely addicted to this size. I think I might be addicted to all of the sizes actually, but I'm sure I'm not the only one. So this is pretty simple so far. And I haven't got to the place where I thought I was going to get yet, where I want to dump something right down the middle, and I have two minutes left. But you can see that I can just keep making new and interesting marks and adding paint to what's there. And I think I'm just going to keep doing that for a while. Because I like it. And somewhere along the line, I can also take a small tool that I have. Hmm, that did not work as well as I expected it to. Okay, so what that means to me is it's time to take a chance and hope that marble doesn't go right into the tip. And that's kind of fun. I've got all kinds of ideas like that, and I started my timer at 19 minutes. The camera shuts off at 20. You've probably heard me say that a million times by now, but if you're new, you need to know. That's why there will be a part two. And I just want to play with all kinds of stuff and just keep striping it out. Stealing paint from my dish, borrowing, using, whatever you want to call it. Looking for spots I may have annihilated the canvas on. I think I want some of that all the way down, right there. The nice thing about my brownish colors is they're usually full of metallics, so they're more bronze and shimmery when they dry than when people complain about their colors going brown. I don't think there's anything that I've forgotten to tell you. And I'm having a good time, so I'm probably just going to keep wanting to have a good time for a while. And that's the timer telling me I've got one minute left. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it for 20. And when I see it's gone off in a minute, I'm going to start another recording. I want some of that red. It's always nice when it behaves and I can get what I want without having big, big dribbles. That has a lot to do with the size of the cut tip. I often cut the tips because sometimes it's just exasperating when you can't get what you want out either. I'm not sure I'd rather have too much than not enough, but I am having a good time, and you're going to be gone. And this is Priscilla in Spring Hill, Florida at Expression of Start Studio in the backyard telling you that's the end of part one, and I'll see you in a moment. Not super impressive, but still kind of fun. Bye for now. I'll be back in a minute.